Beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia is an inherited disorder in which there is mutation in one or two HBB genes leading to decreased production of beta genes and decrease in hemoglobin causing anemia. There are three types of beta thalassemia, beta thalassemia minor, beta thalassemia intermediate and beta thalassemia major. In beta thalassemia minor, there is mutation in one HBB gene. However, in beta thalassemia intermedia and major, there are mutations in both the HBB genes. Pathogenesis of beta thalassemia Beta thalassemia occurs because of mutations on the HBB gene located on chromosome 11. These mutations could be point mutations affecting mRNA processing, also known as splicing mutations, promoter region mutations, which are actually the transcription mutations, or mutations affecting the mRNA translation. In beta thalassemia, there is impaired beta globin gene synthesis and excessive alpha chain synthesis. Because of this, the erythroblast is abnormal and they die mostly in the bone marrow causing ineffective erythropoiesis which is the hallmark of beta thalassemia. Also these abnormal erythroblasts may enter the circulation and cause precipitation of alpha globin aggregates which will lead to the membrane damage and in the spleen when these RBCs go, there is phagocytosis of these RBCs causing extravascular hemolysis in the spleen. Both because of ineffective erythropoiesis and extravascular hemolysis in the spleen, there is anemia. Due to anemia, there is increase in the erythropoietin synthesis which could lead to extramedullary hematopoiesis causing hematosplenomegaly and expansion of the bone marrow causing skeletal deformities. Also because of increased erythroferon, there is suppression of hepcidine which will cause increased intestinal iron absorption and iron overload causing secondary hemochromatosis. The signs and symptoms of beta thalassemia the patients with beta thalassemia minor are generally asymptomatic. Patients with beta thalassemia intermedia and major will have signs and symptoms which may vary from person to person. The most common symptoms are fatigue, jaundice, splenomegaly, development of gallstones due to increased unconjugated bilirubin and bone deformities characterized by frontal bossing, prominent gigomatic bones and depression of the nasal bridge, malocclusion due to overgrowth of maxilla and all this can give rise to the chipmunk facies. The diagnostic workup of beta thalassemia includes complete blood count which will show low hemoglobin, low MCV and low MCH and increased RBC count in the cases of thalassemia intermedia and major. The peripheral smear in these patients will show macrocytic hypochromic RBCs with many target cells, few teardrop and few cells showing basophilic stipplings. There is normal or slightly increased ferritin levels and the transferrin levels are almost normal in thalassemia. High performance liquid chromatography or capillary electrophoresis can be done for hemoglobin analysis and it shows increased amounts of hemoglobin F, hemoglobin A2 and decreased hemoglobin A in patients of thalassemia intermedia and major. If a woman is pregnant and both parents have beta thalassemia trait, the fetus can be checked by chorionic willis sampling which is done around 11th week of pregnancy and amniocentesis which is done around 16 weeks of pregnancy for detection of any changes in the DNA in the cases of beta thalassemia. Young children may be diagnosed with a blood test if they develop anemia and splenomegaly or have poor growth and these blood tests might include CBC, newborn screening or hemoglobin electrophoresis to look at the types of hemoglobin made and beta-globin genotyping.
treatment of beta thalassemia. Individuals with mild form of beta thalassemia may not require specific treatment except for the management of low hemoglobin levels. In symptomatic patients with thalassemia intermedia and major, they may require lifelong blood transfusion therapy along with removal of extra iron from the body via chelation. In patients with beta thalassemia major, splenectomy can be done to reduce the needs for transfusion and lengthen the lifespan of RBCs. In patients with thalassemia major, hematopoietic stem cell transplant is the ultimate cure.